Well, hello everybody and welcome to another week with Dr. McDougall, live with Dr. McDougall. It's so nice to see so many of you logging in from all over the country and all over the world. Today we have a very interesting and important topic. Um, we have received so many questions. We probably won't be able to cover all of them, but there will be other webinars. And uh, Dr. McDougall will share some of his videos and newsletters and other materials where you can get more information. Uh, Dr. McDougall is in California. I am in Dallas, Texas, and he is a real doctor, physician, a certified internist. He's not an alternative uh, doctor. He treats real patients. He writes real prescriptions when needed. And um, I just want to say that because we have a lot of new people that um, are not familiar uh, with uh, Dr. McDougall's program, and I would like to welcome you, Dr. McDougall, and perhaps if you could say a few words about uh, what you do, and, and uh, we'll just get started. Welcome. Thank you very much. Good to be back with you. Well, what I'm doing right now, this week is uh, running a 10-day live-in program in Santa Rosa, California, with all kinds of interesting people. Mm -hmm. You got people with high blood pressure, diabetes, arthritis, a lot of people with uh, cancer, you know, and that's, that's always a challenge. Uh, to deal with people who are basically hopeless in terms right. of having breast or prostate cancer. And, mm. you know, fortunately, the world has come around. We had talked about this in another webinar. The world's come around to uh, understand that even after you have cancer, uh, if you change your diet, you will do better, you will live longer. And uh, anybody who doubts that, just go to my February 2015 newsletter and uh, read the article I wrote uh, based upon the uh, American Cancer Society's new recommendations to have people who already have cancer change their diet and telling them clearly that they'll live longer. So I, I have some uh, very, very demanding uh, problems, which uh, in the face of all the other information everybody considers cancer, absolutely runaway train, can't be budged. Uh, they know that the therapies in most cases of surgery, radiation and chemotherapy are do more harm than good. And you know they see the evidence of that, but uh, to have the American Cancer Society come out and uh, say that uh, you should change your diet after you have cancer. And for me to present in particular to three, three women at this program, this evidence and to give them new hope. And also at the same time to tell them to stay away from doctors. You know, after they've been treated, and I just recommend simple conservative therapies, there's no sense in going back. Uh, they have uh, nothing more to offer, and that's a hard one for people. But that, that really isn't the topic that we have for today. What we're going to talk about today was uh, vitamin and mineral supplements, and um, you'll find, uh, if you go to my website, uh, drmcdougall.com, you'll uh, just put in the search, and you'll find several newsletters I've written on vitamins, uh, just to put it together, hopefully we can get it to play, just kind of a short <clears throat> uh, few uh, slides that will allow me to kind of keep my train of thought and tell you some of the things that I'd like to tell you about uh, vitamins. Not only can you find them in the newsletter, but if you go to uh, education and you go to videos, you'll find uh, several videos that I've done that uh, talk about uh, vitamin supplements. And it's, it's an important topic because many people are fooled by taking vitamin supplements, and they all are also harmed by taking vitamin supplements. Let's see if I can uh, share something uh, with you. We, we were having problems before, so we'll see if we have problems now. <laughs> okay. Well, let's here, see. Here we go. It. Uh, okay, we, we have it on okay? screen. All right, good. Well, uh, what I want to talk to you about is, oh, it's not going to work as easy as I wanted. But, yeah, we'll do it this way anyway. Uh, vitamins are isolated, concentrated nutrients, and uh, they're not foods. They just take a, a, a plant usually, and and uh, uh, they take uh, specific parts of the plant and uh, isolate it. And these are vitamins and nutrients, and then they uh, they sell them to you in packages. All right, let's see. Vitamin deficiencies. Vitamin deficiencies. Vitamins are organic materials. Uh, they are uh, in tiny amounts. They uh, are made by plants. 11 of, the, 11 of the 13 vitamins are made by plants. And uh, let's see if I can get this. We've had so many problems with this today. Now, we'll do it the best I can. 11 of the 13 vitamins are made by plants. 
And the only two that aren't are B12 and vitamin D. And I recommend that people do take uh, vitamin B12. I do not recommend that they take vitamin D, as we're going to talk about in just a minute. Uh, minerals are not synthesized. Uh, minerals are uh, found in the ground, and what happens is uh, plants, uh, through their roots, take up water solutions that contain minerals, and uh, then they're incorporated in their stems and leaves and flowers and fruits, and then people eat the minerals. That's how you get all your minerals is through plants. I mean, nobody eats ground. You uh, get it through plants. So let's see if we can, oh, that's working a little bit better here. Uh, <coughs> The way uh, uh, vitamins and minerals are sold is uh, people are told that our soils are depleted, and that is true. Our soils are depleted, and you can get mineral deficiency as a consequence of depleted soils, but not vitamin deficiency. Remember, vitamins are made by, they're organic materials made by plants. I mean, it wouldn't be a, a cauliflower or a, uh, an orange if the vitamins weren't present. Uh, it just would never make it to the supermarket shelves. But there are mineral deficiencies. Uh, like, for example, there's iodine deficiency. It used to be a big problem in the goiter belt uh, around the Great Lakes back about 100 years ago. And still today, there are places in the world, like in rural Africa, there are places where people don't have enough uh, uh, iodine in the soil. As a result, they get thyroid disease from the iodine deficiency. And it needs to be treated. It is treated uh, in various parts of the world with uh, supplementation of iodine. But in our country, in modern countries, whether you're from Australia or Europe or the United States, you eat a variety of foods, and one may be deficient in a mineral such as iodine. But the next food that you eat will have adequate uh, minerals in it. You get uh, corn from Idaho and apples from Washington and bananas from Panama. So if you have a deficiency in minerals in one selection, uh, the next selection you choose you will find that mineral. Uh, if you're going to have mineral deficiencies, it would be in a situation in a society where they get all of their food, say, within 25 miles of their home. And uh, these soils may be deficient, but we don't eat that way. We eat a whole variety of, uh, of foods that contain uh, many mineral supplements. All right. Uh, the reason I don't recommend supplements is for them, they provide no bang for the buck. If you think about it, you tried, uh, your friends tried, you took supplements, and what happened? Nothing. Nothing. I mean, if you change your diet, dramatic things happen. Uh, you just don't see uh, any deficiency diseases these days. Your friends don't suffer from scurvy, beriberi, pellagra, or cholera. You know, they suffer not from deficiencies, they suffer from excesses. Uh, excess fat, excess protein, excess animal food. That's why people are in trouble. And why would you expect a vitamin or mineral supplement to solve problems of eating too much meat or too much dairy or too much fish or oil? They just can't possibly do it. So uh, you want to get your vitamins from uh, their natural sources in the uh, uh, proper balance, such as uh, fruits and vegetables. You don't want to get them from pills. These are isolated, concentrated nutrients, and they are harmful. Like, for example, uh, beta carotene has been fed to people in various studies. There's uh, two major studies that were published about 20 years ago where they took beta carotene pills and gave them to people as opposed to uh, a placebo. And what they found was that those who took the beta carotene had 28% more lung cancer. These are people with high risk of cancer, like they smoke cigarettes or they work with asbestos, and they had 28% more lung cancer. Uh, beta carotene is a one of over 600 sub substances that are classified as carotenoids. And we require 50 of these different carotenoids, and they come from fruits and vegetables. If you uh, feed somebody a concentrated, isolated, uh, substance in a vitamin pill called beta carotene, what happens is that beta carotene attaches to the carotenoid receptors in your cells and displace positions for the other 49 carotenoids. You just flood these receptors in the cells with beta carotene and there's no room for the other 49 carotenoids that you need for proper health and proper function. So you create these nutritional imbalances by taking these isolated concentrated uh, substance. It's called vitamin pills. 
Same thing uh, with minerals. You flood the cells with minerals and you create imbalances by adding this isolated concentrated substance. All right, let's talk about one of the things that you really want to talk about most, and that's uh, uh, vitamin D. We've been uh, sold vitamin D as a miracle drug, uh, correcting the problems that people have throughout the world. And uh, it's based on the fact that, <clears throat> that uh, sunlight is lower as we get further away from the equator. You know, the sunlight is less, uh, less intense. And uh, that's important to get plenty of sunlight. So we'll talk about you get plenty of sunlight just in your natural environment. But the other thing that happens when you move away from the equator is diseases, common diseases uh, become more frequent, more obesity, more heart disease, more multiple sclerosis, more arthritis become more common as you get away from the equator. And what people have said is that's because they don't get enough sunlight, enough vitamin D. But consider also what happens as you move away from the equator, what happens is the food changes. When people live around the equator, they live primarily on starch-based diets, or they have up, up until recently. As people move north and south, they change their food to more animal foods. Uh, and they're also wealthier people who can afford to eat richer foods. And that's why you see this distribution. It's a confounder of uh, change in diet that occurs. It's not from lack of vitamin D that people get all these diseases. So uh, what has happened is we developed, uh, we developed uh, a, a, a bunch of industries that turn healthy people into sick people. And uh, what they do is they tell people that their problems are due to vitamin D deficiency. And when you go to your doctor, you have to get a blood draw, which checks the amount of vitamin D in your blood. Nine out of 10 people fail to pass the uh, vitamin D test. And uh, <clears throat> as a result, they're told they're vitamin D deficient, and they're told they have to take vitamin D pills. And you see between uh, 2002 and 2011, the sales of vitamin D supplements have increased by more than 10 times due to this disease mongering, telling people that they're sick because their vitamin D levels are low. Well, their vitamin D levels may be low because they're not getting enough sunshine. Sunshine is crucial, and people are working uh, indoors a lot and many people have moved from the equator with their dark skin to higher latitudes and as a result they need more sunshine that's a problem what they need to do is they need to get more sunshine if you happen to be a darker skinned person and you move from uh, an equatorial zone say uh, up to new york city or moscow or some other place where there's less sunshine, you've got to take a greater effort to get out and get more sunshine. Uh, a recent analysis of vitamin D supplements was published. Uh, it's called the Effective Vitamin D Supplementation on Skeletal, Vascular, and Cancer Outcomes. Uh, this is a big uh, meta-analysis that involved a quarter million people from 46 randomized trials, and uh, they didn't find any benefit of vitamin D with or without calcium in terms of reducing bone problems or uh, non-bone problems. And uh, this study is well worth your trouble reading. It's in Lancet Diabetes Endocrinology, published in April of 2014. And it's just one representative study. If you look at the studies published, and those studies can be found by looking at my March 2015 newsletter, and then it sends you to about four other articles I've written, all heavily referenced you'll find that uh, vitamin D supplementation is very ineffective. Uh, what you'll find is that uh, it does benefit people who are at very high risk of problems. And these are uh, institutionalized, elderly, white women. And you see benefit not just with vitamin D, you also have to add calcium with the vitamin D, and then you see a reduction in fractures. That's how ineffective vitamin D is you have to give it to people who are in the greatest risk of having problems of vitamin D deficiency. And that's very old people who don't go outside. These people would be better off uh, if somebody would just put them in a wheelchair and wheel, wheel them outside and let them have, get a little bit of sunshine than they would if they took vitamin D supplements. All right, as I told you, uh, these diseases are common and rare uh, as you go north and south. And the reason is, is because of the food intake. Uh, another reason for chronic uh, <clears throat> low vitamin D levels is uh, because 
when people are sick with heart disease, obesity, diabetes, or so on, uh, there's an inflammatory response. The body tries to heal itself. And some of the in inflammatory factors that are produced actually lower the vitamin D levels in their blood. The other thing is when people are obese, their vitamin D levels become lower because the vitamin D is sucked up in their body fat. So vitamin D is low in people primarily because they're ill. And what you want to do, secondarily because they don't get enough sunshine, but what you want to do to solve low vitamin D levels is you want to, uh, you want to get well. And the way you get well is you change your foods. People are sick because they eat a, uh, a rich diet. And the way to solve the problem is they eat a starch-based diet, rice, corn, potatoes, beans, peas, lentils, and the inflammation goes away. So you don't produce these inflammatory factors that lower vitamin D. That's the way that you want to deal with it. And uh, anyway, I just told you that this is in, uh, you can look at, the, at this inflammatory uh, response that occurs if you go to Lancet Diabetes Endocrinology, January 2014. You can read the paper on uh, how inflammation lowers vitamin D levels. Uh, people who take vitamin D, it's been found, to have uh, more falls and fractures. It raises their bad cholesterol, increases the risk of heart disease. It encourages prostate cancer. It's involved in producing more autoimmune diseases. It suppresses your immune system, causes gast gastrointestinal symptoms, kidney disease, and calcium kidney stones. This is not an innocuous thing to do to take vitamin D. This is a powerful drug that has serious adverse effects. Now, let's take a look at two major studies that were done recently. <clears throat> and this uh, one study comes from, uh, and these, by the way, the only two large randomized trials that I'm going to show you. So there's not a, some uh, cherry picking going on showing you studies, big studies that show the opposite. These are the two studies that you'll find. One involved injectable vitamin D. Uh, these were community dwelling participants. In other words, elderly people who would be likely to benefit from vitamin D and they gave them 300,000 international units of vitamin D to one group and then the, to the other group they gave a placebo uh, every fall over three years, autumn, every autumn over three years. And the vitamin D group showed an almost 50% increased risk in hip and leg fractures. Uh, and you can go to the reference material and read it and uh, see this particular study. It was in Calcific Tissues International, February 2013. And then the other study was from Australia uh, that involved oral vitamin D. Uh, they gave it to elderly people, uh, community dwelling people. They gave them a big dose of oral vitamin D. And what they found was those who got the D had 15% increased rate of falls and 26% increased rate of fractures. So in the two major randomized trials that have been published, and they're the only two large randomized trials published, you show that people are harmed. They have increased falls and fractures. Now, the reason they gave them large doses is because they wanted to make sure they raised their D levels. They raised their vitamin D levels into very high ranges. And people will come back and say, well, it was because they gave such high levels that they got all the falls and fractures. Uh, show me otherwise. Show me uh, studies from uh, uh, randomized, properly done studies of lower doses that showed benefits. Now, the reason that it may cause more falls and fractures is because that vitamin D is a powerful substance. And it may cause weakness of the muscles in the nervous system, which would result in more falls and fractures. All right, so people uh, say to me quite often, they say, look, um, I got to take the pills because where I live, it, the sun doesn't shine. Well, that's not true. You may get less vitamin D where you live because you have less sunshine, but you have adequate sunshine to get the D that you need. Uh, consider that people have lived successfully for tens of thousands of years in Alaska, in the very uh, south uh, latitudes in New Zealand, successfully. And these people, by the way, have darker pigmentations than the average uh, white person does. And yet, uh, and they also wore a lot of clothes because it was cold. And yet they successfully lived with the amount of sunshine available at their particular latitude. Uh, an analysis of uh, sunshine and, and uh, ultraviolet light shows that uh, there's a great amount of uh, ultraviolet light provided all over the world. Uh, you can uh, <clears throat> look at this particular reference when they study by our modern technology that sun, sun, sunlight is, is uh, abundant. 
In fact, there's enough sunshine that you that the uh, Great Bear Rainforest grows north of Vancouver all the way up to the border of Alaska. In other words, you can grow these huge trees and this huge forest with the amounts of sunshine available at those latitudes. You ought to be able to, to uh, give enough sunshine for people to live there. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, my son who's a doctor up in Portland, people come to him all the time and say, I, I, I got to take vitamin D because there's no sunshine in uh, Portland. Well, excuse me, uh, one of the largest uh, solar uh, module factories is located up in Portland, and they wouldn't put these, uh, these solar panels on people's homes if there's no sunshine. There's loads of sunshine. Uh, how much sunshine do you need? Well, a light-skinned person <clears throat> exposing face, arms, and hands for five minutes of sun at noon, two to three times a week at a latitude of Boston, Massachusetts, in the spring, summer, and fall is adequate. However, if your skin, and this is just your hands and face and arms, if your skin is, uh, is darker, then you need to um, get more sunshine. Right? For example, if you're Asian, or if you're black, you must uh, get three to 10 times as much sunshine. Uh, one of the uh, ways you can judge whether or not you're getting enough sunshine is uh, just expose your skin enough so your skin be becomes a little inflamed, slightly reddish. Uh, but don't get too much sunshine. You can really burn yourself terribly. I did that because I was uh, raised in Michigan and then I moved to Hawaii and got myself a sailboat. And I stayed out in the sun too long. I was uh, living at, uh, too low latitude with my, my very white skin. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to damage yourself. Uh, well, these are levels that are in, indicated as uh, adequate for vitamin D. But uh, the truth is, is uh, your vitamin D levels can be as low as 12 nanograms per milliliter and uh, still be considered adequate uh, in terms of health. And remember, one of the reasons that D levels are so low, nine out of 10 people, nine out of 10 people flunk the vitamin D test is because they're sick and they're fat. Uh, when they did a study of uh, surfers in Hawaii who spent 28 hours a week in the sun, uh, they found half of them were vitamin D deficient based upon uh, levels that are considered uh, 30 nanograms per milliliter. These are people out there getting tons of sunshine. Uh, these vitamin D levels are inaccurate, irrelevant. Uh, all they should do, the relevance should be, is should tell you to get out in the sun to get healthy and stop the inflammation and disease that's lowering the D. When I was writing the March 2015 newsletter, uh, which I hope you take the trouble to read uh, at my website, drmcdougall.com, I was having Mary uh, edit the newsletter and she says, but John, what people want to know is at what level would you give vitamin D injections or pills to people? And so I answered that right up front, uh, that there is no level of vitamin D discovered by blood tests that I would cause, that would cause me as a medical doctor to prescribe vitamin D supplements to one of my patients. And the reason I wouldn't do that is because I just showed you the major studies show an increased risk of falls and fractures in these people who take supplements of vitamin D. And it causes all kinds of other problems such as kidney stones and raises your bad cholesterol and it uh, increases prostate cancer. Why would I give a drug that hurts people to my patients? What I would do, what I would do is I would get them to go out in the sun and to get healthy by eating a starch-based diet. That's what I would do. So uh, unfortunately, the uh, presentation didn't uh, fit the size of the slides as well as I expected. And there are a few uh, technical reasons for that, and they mostly lie with me. <laughs> But uh, I hope you got the gist of the point by watching the slides. And I, I'd sure love to entertain some questions. And if you, you object or find some fault in my reasoning, uh, please let me know. Uh, this is important that you stop taking this supplement. It's important you get healthy and it's important you get out in the sunshine and go for a walk. That was a very good presentation, Dr. McGill, and we could see it all, so no problem. Um, I do want to show people your book here because there is a whole chapter that you wrote on supplements that is called uh, just to be on the safe side stay away from supplements uh, yes, I so. did. and that newsletter that uh, same chapter is free for you also on the website just go to hot topic supplements and uh, all, all kinds of articles I've written on this over the years not just 
vitamin D, but beta carotene and vitamin E. These things are toxic, folks. These are, this is not just wasted money. Uh, these things are hurting you and your family. Don't take them. The only supplement I recommend is uh, B12. And we can talk about that someday. And uh, you need to get out in the sun. You need to eat well. And you need to go for a walk. And that's what the truth is. It doesn't make a lot of money, but that's what, that's what the, the truth is. Right. Well, thank you. Let's see if we have, would you like to uh, yeah, entertain some that. questions? We got, uh, I went a little longer than I expected, but I sure like to answer some questions. All right. Very good. So since you touched on the topic of uh, B12, would you just say a few words about um, yeah. when do you recommend it and how much or for whom, things like that? Sure. Uh, in all my books, you go back uh, 35 years, in all my books, I've recommended that people who are on the diet, I recommend take a B12 supplement. And the reason is, is I don't want anybody to be harmed in any way by my recommendations. Uh, B12 deficiency is extremely rare. I could maybe find uh, 10 actual cases of disease of B12 deficiency. I mean, you can see, you can see laboratory changes and so on, but actual disease is extremely rare. And it, even to the point where I would question whether or not B12 deficiency really exists as a disease. But to, just to be on the safe side, I recommend people take vitamin B12. And if you really want to know, Mary and I do take vitamin B12 as a supplement. <clears throat> now, the dose you need is about a half a, uh, excuse me, five tenths of a microgram. I recommend five micrograms a day if you've been on the diet for more than three years, strictly. The problem is when you go to the store, you can't find five microgram supplements. You can find 500 micrograms or 5,000 micrograms. And that is certainly a, a big overdose of what you need. As far as I know to date, and I reserve the right to change my opinion, uh, I don't know of any serious hazards created by that excess of vitamin B12. Uh, the reason they give vitamin B12 in those, uh, those dosages, I believe, is because if you lose your active B12 uh, mechanisms for absorbing B12 in the gut, this is a you lost intrinsic factor, your stomach was damaged, your intestine was damaged, uh, if you lose the ability to actively uh, absorb B12 at doses of 1,000 or 2,000 micrograms by passive absorption of the of vitamin, you'll, you'll correct B12 deficiency. You don't, you don't need B12 shots, even in those circumstances. If you take a large enough dose, like they usually sell on the tablets and the pills, you'll, you'll correct it by passive absorption mechanisms. Uh, so that's, that's B12. B12 is made by bacteria. It's not made by any animal or any plant. Bacteria make B12. The reason it's in animal foods is because the uh, bacteria are consumed by animals and they store the B12 in their tissues. Well, we do the same thing. Uh, we eat bacteria in the mouth. is one of the dirtiest places in the, in the body. It makes lots of B12. And so does uh, other parts of the body. It makes lots of B12. Uh, maybe because people are so hygienically conscious, they're, they're, they're so clean. Uh, maybe there's a case of B12 deficiency, but back in the, the olden days, people would go out to their, uh, their garden lands and pick up the uh, vegetables and shake off the dirt and go into the kitchen and the chicken would be sitting on the counter and they'd push the chicken and some of its waste off the counter and they'd cut up the vegetables. They got lots of bacteria. So maybe because people are so hygienic, maybe they do get, uh, B12 deficiency because B12 is made by bacteria, not animals, not plants. Just to be on the safe side, take some B12. Right. And you, uh, you uh, recommend a specific type of B12, right? You know, that's another thing that I'm not as settled on as I used to be. I, I used mm -hmm. to recommend a methyl and hydroxy form and not the cyano form. But there's been uh, some newer thoughts and uh, concerns about taking the methyl and hydroxy form even though in some research it shows it to be uh, qu quite effective and cyano not to be effective. But uh, some, a new paper out shows uh, just the opposite. And so I really don't know. I don't, I don't know what to tell you as far as the, the best brand. And uh, as I've said before, I reserve the right to change my opinion on, uh, on drugs I recommend and uh, medical treatments I recommend because uh, the, the, the research is a, is a moving target. It's uh, heavily influenced by industry. It's uh, inadequate in terms of uh, its findings about uh, the harms and the benefits. So I, I say I, I reserve my right to change my opinion. But those of you who are sitting watching me and saying, 
is he going to change his opinion on what I should eat? <laughs> the answer is no. So don't sit around and wait for that. I'm, I'm uh, very comfortable and very solid on the fact that uh, the human diet is a starch-based diet, as it always has been in the Mayans and Aztecs and Incas and people living in the breadbasket of the world, which we watch on TV every night in Syria and Egypt and Iran and Iraq. And in Asia, uh, rice uh, and other starches, people are starchitarians. And so your diet should be starch with fruits and vegetables and your rich food intake, that means animals and oils should be minimal. And for most of you who are like me, it's an all or nothing thing. I have to say, you know, I'm not gonna eat food poisons. I'm not gonna smoke cigarettes. I'm not gonna do these things because I just, I cannot be a moderate person. I have to live my life in extremes, and most of you do too. There are a few of you who are moderate out there, and you'll do okay with moderation, but most of you, moderation will kill you. Right. Uh, Dr. McDougall, um, some people are asking about uh, what to do to get enough um, iodine with food. Well, as I say, your, um, your foods are going to be grown in different soils. You may eat uh, 50 different uh, foods that are grown in 50 different soils every weekend, whereas one may be deficient in iodine. <clears throat> uh, the next one will be adequate in iodine. The reason they iodized salt about uh, 7,500 years ago is because of the goiter belt that existed in the Great Lakes area. And uh, the, there wasn't uh, enough enough iodine even in the salt so they put iodine in the salt which uh, you know may have been necessary back then when we didn't have such wide distribution of food but uh, i haven't checked lately but i think uh, iodized salt is uh, something of the past you could uh, take a mineral supplement if you're concerned about it. but the thing is, is i've never seen iodine deficiency in my own personal practice i've never seen it now, i read about it occurring in parts of africa where people eat within all their food comes within 25 miles of their village. And it's a very serious problem, and they're given injections of iodine. And, uh, they, they need to be supplemented, but not for the average person living in the United States or Europe or any uh, industrialized country where you have supermarkets. It's just not an issue. Uh, uh, the soil may be deplete of one mineral in one place, but the next food you pick is grown in a soil that's sufficient in that particular mineral. So you just don't see those problems uh, in developed countries. So some, some people seem to be confused uh, about iodine and thyroid. Well, so iodine is a mineral. Iodine. It's a mineral that's necessary for proper uh, thyroid hormone production. And if you don't have it, then you can't synthesize your thyroid hormone sufficiently, and you develop a goiter and iodine deficiency, which is a very serious problem. So the reason they associate iodine with thyroid is because that's the primary problem that occurs with iodine deficiency is a goiter and hypothyroidism. But again, I don't see most thyroid problems that occur in people are due to Hashimoto's or autoimmune thyroiditis. Thyroiditis. What happens is <laughs> an immune disease where the body produces antibodies against the thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. And I could go into a, a, a somewhat made up story about how the body produces antibodies uh, to the thyroid gland. The reason I believe it does, and I don't really have a, a lot of evidence to back this up, except for the fact that, that all the things I know about the human human body uh, say that this is true. Uh, what happens, how you get Hashimoto's or autoimmune thyroiditis, and your body makes antibodies to your thyroid gland is you eat foreign thyroid glands. Uh, how do you eat foreign thyroid glands? These would be thyroid glands from pigs and cows, and it's mm -hmm. called hot dogs, sausages, that's how you eat foreign thyroid glands. When you go to the slaughterhouse, after they strip the muscles off the animal, uh, they take the glands, you know, the, the spleen, the liver, the bone marrow, the thyroid glands, the scrotums and vaginas and whatever else is left over and they grind it up and they make it into sausage and hot dogs. That's right. how you eat foreign, foreign, foreign thyroid proteins and other, other foreign proteins that your body reacts to and gives you autoimmune disease. And that's right. one way. Drinking milk is another one. That's how you get these uh, diseases like multiple sclerosis and inflammatory arthritis and so on. It's from eating animals. What about the fortified food? Someone is asking. Isn't that just isolated vitamins and minerals that uh, is added to the food so that it's the same as taking a pill? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. They'll take. Uh, they'll take. Uh, 
Now, diseases, uh, deficiency diseases like beriberi, that occurred after they uh, started taking the, the uh, shell off of rice and made white rice. You got beriberi. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way that the rice company solved this is they put a coat on the white rice that contained uh, uh, the vitamin B1, I believe it is. And the same thing with uh, pellagra. Uh, that occurred when they started refining the corn and you develop pellagra and uh, vitamin C deficiency. Vitamin C is in uh, fruits and vegetables. It isn't in any adequate concentration in grains or legumes. Uh, it's adequate in potatoes. And in fact, potatoes are called the anti-scurvy vitamin. Well, well, the way this uh, occurred is people would get into situations where their fruits and vegetables would rot, like when they went out to sea. All they have left are the, are, uh, are the legumes and the grains and they developed scurvy. And it was several hundred years ago they discovered that scurvy was due to vitamin C deficiency. And the way they solved it initially, or most famously, is they had the sailors take along limes. And as a result, the British sailors were uh, known as limeys because the limes would last and then they just and they'd avoid scurvy. And this was like, you know, in the 1700s they discovered this. Uh, and scurvy was a big deal, a really big deal to see uh, sea traveling. Uh, people at that time uh, because uh, so many people suffered from the scurvy who went out to sea until they discovered that uh, you got to take limes or potatoes would do it too. Potatoes are anti-scurvy. Uh, right, 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 right. There is something uh, I've never heard of. I, uh, I'm wondering, Dr. McDougall, if you've heard of, uh, someone is asking about what about taking um, biotin? Uh, I don't, I, it's in the food. I don't. I couldn't address it any further. But hey, listen. If if somebody can take and find a nutrient that they can package in a pill, or a mm -hmm. drink, a vitamin drink, they're gonna they're gonna market it to you. That's what they do. Is they sell you this stuff, uh, with the idea that uh, this is how you're gonna correct your health problems. So you have a bunch of fat sick people running around with bags full of vitamin pills, and they're just fat sick people running around with bags full of vitamin pills and also doctor right. prescription pills. Uh, you just you got to fix the food, and the food for human beings is starch and fruits and vegetables. And you got to get some sunshine. You got to walk around. That's it. And plain and simple, that's it. You know, avoid that's getting it. hit by a car when you're riding your bike, and uh, yeah. otherwise you should expect your body to live and function well. Do you recommend in some cases tanning beds? Uh... Oh, yeah, that, 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 that people ask me. They say, "Look, I, I just can't get out anytime, any sun, any you can you can use a a tanning bed." A, uh, uh, sun lamp type of device that produces the spectrum of ultraviolet light that you need for the uh, skin to synthesize uh, precursors of vitamin D. It's a complex process that initially takes place in the skin. Then further modifications of uh, vitamin D occur in the kidneys and liver. So if you just plain and simple aren't going to get out in the sun, uh, you need to do it. And it's not just for the vitamin D. There are all kinds of benefits from sunshine. It uh, regulates your immune system. Uh, it regulates uh, your circadian rhythms. You know, uh, like for example, you notice on when you have jet jet lag. Uh, one of the issues is you have to reset your your circadian rhythm with the uh, rise and set, setting of the sun. Uh, it uh, sunshine modulates your immune system, both in the skin and in the rest of the body. It uh, lowers your pulse rate. It lowers your blood pressure. It raises good cholesterol. It does all kinds. All kinds of amazing things sunshine does. So just don't think sunshine and vitamin D. Sunshine is crucial for so many uh, issues of your health. Uh, you need the sunshine. And if you can't, as you mentioned, Gustavo, uh, you just plain and simple can't get out in the sun. Well, my sun lamp may work. But understand that the uh, benefits of sunshine are stored for a long period of time. There's, for example, vitamin D is stored in your body fat for months. Uh, think of the people who live... Uh, up in Alaska or above the Inuits. Uh, there are times of the year when there's no sunshine at all. And uh, the vitamin D that they get from the sun during the summer is stored in their tissues. Also, it's so uh, amazing how nature takes care of us. There are vitamin D foods, which would be uh, some of the fish that they eat, uh, contains a, a vitamin D as a stored product. And that's part of the diet and prevents people in those northern latitudes from getting uh, uh, problems of vitamin D deficiency. But sunshine is the key. And Dr. Mantuko, you just mentioned something, if, you, if we don't mind touching on this topic, and then I know you need to go. Um, 
the, the, some of these uh, vitamins and minerals that people get from animal food, uh, they do, animals get them from the plants. Yeah, they get them from the plants and from sunshine. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the minerals, as I say, all come from the soil. And, uh, you know, a cow may chew a little bit of soil, but the primary source of the minerals uh, is from the plants that the cow, the grasses, grains the cow eats. So all the minerals come from the soil. And vitamins are organic, organic synthesized small molecules that the plants make. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't reach the, uh, the grocery shelf if they didn't make the uh, vitamin E and beta carotene and other types of, uh, of uh, small substances that are put into pills uh, for people to take, which create diseases. Remember, these are isolated concentrated nutrients and they cause an imbalance in the system. Uh, our, our human body uh, has been evolving over uh, 4 million years and, and other organisms have been evolving over 400 million years. And uh, these balances are created between say the cow and the uh, food that the cow eats or the panda bear and the bamboo shoots that it eats. And so these, uh, these natural balances occur so that when you eat a food, uh, you don't just eat uh, beta carotene or vitamin C uh, you eat all kinds of nutrients, uh, vitamins and minerals and other uh, phytochemicals that go into the system in the proper amount, the proper order, the proper balance, so that the uh, internal receptors are properly uh, activated at, at the right time. It's a miraculous system out there that human nature has created. And we start uh, violating the basic principles that have kept people, people on Earth and animals on Earth for you know, hundreds of millions of years. Uh, when we start violating these systems by selling these uh, products to make money, uh, we create illness, not not health. Right. Well, Dr. McDougall, thank you. I know that there are a lot of questions. Uh, well, uh, still. Let's, let's do it next week. <laughs> we, we can continue to do a part two. Uh, but in the meantime, people can actually go and read the sources that you mentioned. There yeah, are newsletters and videos. Website. Uh, use the search engine. Uh, you'll find the uh, newsletters that I've written on all of this with the scientific documentation. And it's free. And it's free <laughs> and it's logical. And uh, also I've done uh, many lectures uh, on uh, supplements and various diseases. You just go to my hot topics, which is under education. Or again, use that search in engine. Put in what you want and that search engine is amazing at leading you to uh, this information, which as you say, we give away free. I also do just want to take a minute to tell you that we, uh, we do things that we can't give away for free, like we're running a 10-day program for people. We've got another one coming up in January. In January, we're also taking people to Hawaii, to Kauai, and we'd love to have you join us on that adventure trip. Unfortunately, the June Alaska trip is sold out. We have an advanced study weekend coming up uh, in February 12 through 14 that I, I, you need to be aware of. Oh, this is an amazing weekend, extremely, in terms of value, inexpensive. And T. Colin Campbell will be there, and. Yes, uh, my friend Dr. Esselstyn will be there, and Greg, uh, Michael Gregor will be there, and Scott Stahl, and Brenda Davis, and some new guests also. So go to the, uh, to the website, drmcdougall.com, and look under programs, and you'll see this amazing weekend. And you're going to be there, Gustavo, I hope. And, uh, I hope so. Yeah, I mean, the last one was just unbelievable. They say the best advanced study weekend ever. We're going to prove them wrong. We're going to do a better one uh, this February. So we have lots of that where we personally interact with you, but everything that I teach you, recipes, uh, the, all the scientific data, all the discussions that uh, are all provided for nothing. I mean, we're absolutely free. There's no gimmick here. You say, why? Well, uh, the greatest gift in life is helping other people. And Mary and I have had that opportunity for the last 40 years by giving this free message away. So you know, please get involved, get your friends involved. Uh, uh, it's so simple. Uh, the problem is uh, the other guy's got the money. We got the truth <laughs> and success. They got the money. Uh, so we'll try and try and fight them at every level we can. Well, thank you for another really informative and amazing webinar. Well, we really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for your help, Gustavo. And I, I, I express uh, too infrequently just how what an important role you played in getting these going and managing uh, these uh, webinars and you don't you don't get enough credit
Thank you, thank you. Uh, I wanted to uh, remind everybody to go to drmcdougall.com and the Dear Education tab, and there you can register for all the upcoming webinars. And if you're ever interested in a particular topic, please send that topic to doc, um, webinar at drmcdougall.com. That's an email address, webinar at drmcdougall.com, and we'll try to fit it in. Okay, and well, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining uh, us, and we look forward to next week. I guess why not? Next week could be just as fine. Next, next Thursday at eleven a.m. Pacific time. We'll see you all there. All right. Bye bye. Okay. Bye.